everybody, it's Conrad and Susan from ConradRocks.net. Conrad and Susan and cicada bugs and alligators and the four winds is behind us. Oh. And then we're coming at you from the Indian Point RV, RV resort, resort and campground. It's just a campground. It's they, a resort. They call it a resort. It's the last resort. It's a campground. We love it. It's but great. it's wonderful. We love James, the owner. And uh, hi, Mark Smith. Thank anyway, you. Kevin Reardon's here. Dude, you're doing that picture-in-picture -picture interview? I want to do that. Yeah. That's for Apple people. Now, I'm just going to tell you, man, if you got an Apple and there's a big hunk out of it on the back of your phone, I'm just saying yeah, that you got an Apple out. You took know. a bite of the Apple, dude. You Anyway, I really like seeing Kevin Reardon's interview. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> okay, we're going to pick up uh, where we left off. Uh, we left off in Acts 1-8, then we went evangelizing this summer, but now we're back and we've got bandwidth. So Susan's going to tell you the news, and we're going to pray in, and then we're going to do the Bible study. What news do we well, have? Well, the big news is <coughs> so She's going to make it up. I'm going to make it up. <coughs> no, this past weekend we did, it's not really news, but it's past news, we went to IG Levy Park and did a hot dog outreach and had actual, <coughs> like, real church with four people and... Oh, it's awesome. Talked about the Bible, answered lots of questions, prayed with a couple of people. So it was really cool. Hot dog homeless outreach. Mm hmm And, um, but anyway, our summer was exciting. If y'all haven't seen it on Facebook, Ooh, you I should check it them. out. Because we, we did a whole month pretty much nonstop in June. And then July was a little less intense. Actually, it was more intense because we were moving into this trailer with our all our stuff but we did pretty much ministry the whole summer and now we are fully back in school back to a routine so we thought well let's start the bible study though. so we're doing that kevin pastor kevin we miss you man yeah good to see you anyway so our this is our first one from the rv park and we're outside and i'm we're sure people are gonna it. walk by and go what in the world are these who are they talking to we have the special so. task of getting an indian Point an RV resort gang sign. Just kidding. Yeah, there is one other thing, and that's this man, Hurley Ray. Oh, we're getting and in we're on getting, the birds. We're getting in on the birding scene here, and we don't know anything about it. It's kind of funny. But what's really funny is that uh, Hurley just loves Conrad. I don't know. He likes me for some <laughs> he reason. He calls him every day and wants to take him to these places and show him all these things. It's just, it's real interesting, but we just have a feeling God has lined all this up, and Hurley has really no clue about it, that yeah. what God's doing, but we met a lady, Sandra Eisler. He actually saved her life. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of really weird kind of connections between these people, but we met her at a garage sale doing a garage sale outreach. We prayed yeah. for her, yeah. and then after that, we ended up meeting Hurley Ray at this event where she was unveiling a painting that she did yeah. at City Hall. Well, you know, I just it's just a coincidence, but he saved her life years ago. She had come home from the hospital and needed some kind of special breathing machine. He didn't know it was her. Yeah. And he was it's at the story. event, and she tells him tells him right there in front of all those people, and he just kind of wow. So we're like. You know, God's in this somewhere. We just have a figured yeah, out Yeah, something now. to do with birds. We're in like a bird watching capital, and people don't know about it. It's a big secret. So yeah. if you're into birding, yeah, you need to come to go shave your yeah. birds because it's pretty awesome. We're gonna place. put this place on the map for birds. You're gonna see a lot of pictures of birds. Yeah, we'll in my keep stream, you informed yeah. as we figure out what God's up to. If he's up to something because he's getting a lot of people connected. Thanks for the thumbs up. <laughs> All right, let's pray and let's do this. Okay. Okay, Father God, I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing here on this broadcast, Lord. I thank you that, that we're going to go out a different way than we came in. Holy Spirit, guide us. Lord. I, I love Acts. It's about the Acts of the Apostles that were Amen. fueled by the Holy Spirit. Lord, I thank you that we're going to catch this prophetic wave, catch what you're doing through this Bible study, Lord. And I pray that people's lives are changed from, you know, with, wow, that's awesome. That was God. Yeah. We pray for that to happen tonight in Jesus' name. All right, Susan's All right. going to read probably around Acts 1 9 and then keep going a little bit. Okay. 
All right, Acts chapter 1, verse 9. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you unto heaven, shall so come in like manner, as ye have seen him go into heaven. Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they were, were come in, they went up into an upper room, where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew and Philip and Thomas and Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon Zealots the, and Judas the brother of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the woman and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. And in those days Peter stood up in the midst of his disciples and said, The number of names together were about a hundred and twenty. Men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas which was guide to them that took Jesus, for he was numbered with us and had obtained part of this ministry. Now this man purchased a field with the reward of, the, of iniquity, and falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst, and all his bowels gushed out. Good enough. Yeah, we're we're, we're not going to get this far. We go like eight yeah, verses. We're good. Yeah, we take forever. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Now, the way we do this, <laughs> the way we do this, comments are actually encouraged, and even Questions after, too. even, it doesn't even have to be in the live. For the replay viewers, you know, comment in the comments, and we will get back with you. Amen. Or you Amen. can do it live. This will also be put up on YouTube once I download it, and it'll also be, it'll be in the sidebar of ConradRocks.net. Okay, so in, in verse 8, uh, to set it up, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall be witnesses to both, to me, both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Now we're starting off on verse 9. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he He's was taken, taken up, up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. The ascension. Yeah. I I uh I took some notes here back in May when I thought we were gonna do this. It's been a long time. And um, one of the things that hit me that I, that I took my notes is um, Jesus in the clouds. And this has a particular thing for me. Mm. My dad in in Hamlin. Texas. Hamlin or Rotan, Texas. Two, two spots. Hamlin. He told me that when he was a kid, when he was eight years old, he saw Jesus in the sky, in the clouds. He says, Conrad, I want you to remember this. I saw Jesus. You know? And then my grandmother, she told me, she goes, I saw this angel in the clouds. You know, and Jesus is referred to as a strong angel in the book of Revelation. Uh, then later, there, there's a blog post on ConradRocks.net. Man, it's a long story. But this little girl saw Jesus in the clouds in Hamlin, Texas. And Susan got to be a part of part of this story. We're traveling back. And I said, Susan, pull over in this little store. And it's going to be God. But if somebody knows what I'm talking about, it's going to rock. you know. And uh, I went into the store and said, does anybody know... Just two people were in the store, the lady behind the cash register and one other lady. One other and lady. Conrad, that's it. One other lady. And uh, I said, you know, there was a picture of Jesus in the sky here, in, in the clouds up in the sky. Mm -hmm. And the person didn't know what I was talking about. And the lady across the door goes, I know what you're talking about. Not only do I know, I have a picture and I'll give it to you. So I have a picture of Jesus in, and you got to look at it. It's on my blog post somewhere. Uh, but I talk about it quite a bit. And the story is this little girl, she saw Jesus in the clouds. And she said, Dad, that's Jesus. And he couldn't see. He couldn't see it. But he took a photo. He took a photo. And this photo is the best picture on the Internet. And the, then he saw it. Yeah. And you can see it clearly. I mean, it's not like a cloud at all. It's like a man. It's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. Anyway, after that, the girl drowned. And I'm just saying there's something about... 
Jesus in the clouds. Behold, I come with clouds. There's so many scriptures about Jesus coming with clouds. Revelation 1 7. But the reason I'm getting into this is because it's about to say how he's going to come back. But yeah. behold, he comes with clouds, every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all the kindreds of the earth will well because of him. It's mysterious. Yeah. Anyway, that, that verse has a special meaning to me. Yeah. Okay, verse 10, And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven, he went up, and behold, two men stood with him. In white apparel. In apparel. So we assume those are angels. Yeah, you ever notice that angel is a Greek word, agalos? Um, probably, I'm going to make, I'm going to verify. Well, you're not going to know. But even Gabriel's referred to as a man. The angel Gabriel's, and the man Gabriel. If you look it up in the book of Daniel, it says he's a man. And anyway, it, these are angels in human form. Can you just see this scene? Jesus just went up, and they're all just got their mouths open. I mean, I can really kind of like see this in Mississippi. A bunch of guys just like, what just happened? Just, what you know? What's yeah. going on here? Don't have Facebook Live. And, and, and then, and then, ask. They're looking for that small little dot of him disappearing, and they're still there, just wondering what happened, you know. And then these angels kind of like walk up, and go, "Wow, these guys are gazing." Because in the next verse it says. And you men of Galilee, why stand you gazing into heaven? Because that's not a normal sight. That's why. <laughs> you know? There's something unusual. This yeah. same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall come, come in like manner, manner as you've seen him go into heaven. Um, hey, Judith, it's good to see you. Thank you. Judith Chalmers Davison. We've been praying for you. Richard Scoggins, good to see you. Anyway, so in in like manner, um, that caught my attention. In like manner doesn't mean the exact same way. Yeah. But kind of like it. Yeah. But another thing that caught my attention too, and I was actually talking about this on the Christian chat with Boxer, is Christians get paralyzed about things of God. You're standing gazing. It's like you're standing there. Don't just do something. Stand there, you know. And, and these people were kind of hit with that moment. And uh, Stephen from Holy Fire Japan goes, yeah, you know, we just like to stand there in awe, and we don't do much with it. And the angels are kind of they encouraging. Stopped them. Yeah, they were. Hey, okay, you, you need to come on. You need here. to move on, on now. Let's do something. You know, you just saw him go up. Plus, you know, Jesus told them, you know, I need to go away. I need to go away because the Holy Spirit will come. When I'm gone, the Holy Spirit's going to come, and that's going to change everything. They didn't know what that meant when he said it. So everything was still a very big mystery at this point. But it was all part of the plan. The plan was to get God in man so that they could do the work they could never have done without it, without the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You know, another thing that... that comes across my memory is how many different second comings are there of Jesus? I mean, yeah, yeah. as the lightning comes from the east to the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Oh, so he comes with clouds. Um, uh, You'll see him it almost gets confusing. You know, one where he stands with his foot on the water and one with his foot on the mountain. Uh, I think that's in Zechariah. Mm -hmm. Mount Olives. Mm -hmm. She'll clear it. That's Zechariah 14.4. So, the biggest problem we have, though, is not necessarily the scripture being different, but it's our theology on top of our scripture that's so different. Because if you go, you know, you hear sermons and teachings and books, and you hear all this stuff, and you just, that's, no matter how much you really don't want to do it, you end up putting those thoughts and ideas in with what you're reading when you're reading the Word, and so... It just multiplies the confusion because everybody's got their own ideas. We don't know. Yeah, we're superimposing the, the books that we read over yeah. over the scripture. And I, I put a really cool question in. And movies. Movies. Lots I, I, of movies I'm gonna tell you. I'm going to tell you something. I love The Passion. I love The Ten Commandments. I mean, I love those type of movies. But one of the things, even about Christian movies, and I'm not down on Christian movies, but you, you realize, just kind of yeah. start visualizing the movie. You go, oh, that was in the movie. 
But that was in the movie. It wasn't necessarily in it wasn't scripture. It was necessarily in the Bible. It may have happened yeah. different, but because we're watching that, that we gives have you the these, idea, yeah. this paradigm. And uh, something I was talking about today on Facebook, you know, how would your theology change if you only read the words and read, you know, what Jesus said? Mm-hmm. And a lot, of, a lot of things that we tend to do is we do what's called proof texting. We'll take a scripture from Paul or something, and, <clears throat> and we'll, in, instead of um, attenuating or expounding on what Jesus said, it's almost like it supersedes what Jesus said. And you know, I want you to go, wait a minute, that's God, Jesus. You know, you, the words in red, we're going to stick with those and let Paul yeah, kind of explain. Yeah, and then Paul's it. words, so, if you <clears> take <throat> them in Jesus and you <clears throat> take them alongside Jesus' yeah. teachings, then you don't get off. But if you just take Paul without Jesus at all, sometimes people do get a little off. Yeah, Paul, remember whose audience was? Oftentimes it was Pharisees, you know. Right. And then, so he's having to go, okay, grace, 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 grace. You guys are working. Yeah, and works. He's, he's talking to a works audience. He's talking to people who definitely did not have a problem with adhering to the law. Yeah. Because that was all they wanted to do. So we now take that and use Paul that as type of grace to, to them. sin. As a license to sin. So yeah. it's a totally different thing. Amen. Amen. Verse 12 uh, then they returned into Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey. You know, this is the only actual mention, I think, in the whole Bible of, of a Sabbath day's journey. Well, and there's another mention of it in the Old Testament. Well, I'm about to I'm about to go over this really cool um, web page. Okay. I found this today. And I'm like, oh man, this explains it really well. It's from BibleHub.com, I think. Hmm. And my computer pulls it up. Uh-uh. Got too much going on. Okay, listen to this. This is pretty cool. And, and you'll also know when I when I talk about this. You'll also know when Jesus has this problem with the Pharisees, he's like, you guys are nullifying the Word of God by your tradition. Right. And you'll, you'll see here from this how they were looking for loopholes. You know, the flesh looks for loopholes. Mm-hmm. And that's why Paul talks, one of the reasons, one of the angles about Paul talking about the flesh, he's actually talking about the struggle with the flesh, the looking for the loopholes in Scripture. And this is a loophole that they found. Uh, let them have a have a journey. Yeah, check it out, man. In Acts one twelve, where it designates the distance from Jerusalem to the Mount of Olives, to which Jesus led his disciples on the day of his ascension, the expression comes from the rabbinical usage to indicate the distance a Jew might travel on the Sabbath without transgressing the law. If you remember, he said don't do any work on, on the Sabbath, right? right? So they tried to like, well, how far can I go? How far this can is the I funny go thing. Before I break the law. Anyway, the command against working on that day has been interpreted as including travel. Uh, uh, Exodus 16. 25, 77. Yeah. Oh, well, I didn't want to do that. I thought it was going to pop up. I have this really cool yeah. thing that pops it up. The li- anyway. The limit set, the limit by, set the by the rabbis for the Sabbath day journey was 2,000 cubits. A cubit's about 18 inches from one's house or domicile which was derived from the statement found in Joshua 3, 4. The distance between the ark and the people. Yeah. So they kept them apart. Yeah. So they wouldn't be burnt up. (laughs) Yeah, I'm going to look at this in a different Bible software. But say about 3,000 feet behind, that's the net Bible. I don't know why that went to the net Bible. Yet there shall be a space between you and it about 2,000 cubits by measure. Come not near to it that you may know the way which you must go, for you have not passed this way before. Yeah. So they were like looking for a loophole. And it's real interesting because you would think when God says do no work, it's like a little kid, you know. How far can I go without before getting barbecued, you yeah. know. And, and, and that's what I feel like that they were doing. Right. So, anyway. Sabbath day's journey. Yeah, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put that link in the show notes. So you guys remind me to do that. I'm gonna put the link in the show okay. notes because it's really cool. It's on Bible Hub and the uh, BibleHub.com, and the topic is Sabbath Day's Journey. It's pretty interesting. Um, okay, 
And in verse 13, and when they were come in, they went up into an upper room where they abode with both Peter, James, James and John. John. That's the inner circle peeps, right? And the rest of the disciples. And Andrew, Andrew Philip, Philip, and Thomas. Thomas. And Matthew, James, Simon, Zella, Judas, the brother of James. These are other disciples. Amen. So the disciples were there in the upper room. So this is, remember, Jesus said, go tarry in Jerusalem. Yeah. That's where they were. They went to an upper room. Now, I want to tell you something cool about this verse. Peter's there. He's the first one. And the reason I want to encourage you with this is, if you remember, Satan asked permission to sift Peter as wheat. Remember? And Jesus didn't say, Peter, don't worry. You know, I rebuked him. I rebuked him in my name. He ain't going to touch you. Don't worry. No, he allowed him. He says, you know... At, you're going to be restored and then you're going to strengthen your brethren and Peter was so full of guilt and shame after he betrayed Jesus that when the angel come back you know he's like go tell uh, the disciples and Peter you know he wasn't even included you know because Peter didn't Peter thought it was done Peter went back he to fishing he thought it was over he went back to fishing he went yeah. back to fishing you know and then and then God he's breathed on him again you know and, and he gets all excited again and now Peter's name's first yeah, I just, I and not just was, first, but now he's like the he's the guy. dude. He's the guy that preaches the sermon that bursts the church. You know, he's you the know. dude. He's going to be preaching here in the next chapter. Yeah. I mean, it's like yeah. I mean, you know. So I just want to let you know, we go through trials and tribulations, and that's those are learning experiences. I'm not encouraging you to go out and mess up, but I'm saying you know, God turns oh, turns our mistakes back. around. Just keep coming back. Amen. So then he notices. Then he mentions all these people. All the disciples. Is that all twelve? One, yeah. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We're missing the twelve. Yeah, Judas is actually disciples. different. It's Judas, the other Judas. Yeah. That the Judas, the brother of James, is not the Judas Iscariot. Now I'm just going to posit this. I'll probably posit this in the next few times because you know, in, in the Book of Revelation, it talks about the twelve apostles of the Lamb. Right here is a time to start thinking about this because if you'll notice, when Jesus went up all night in prayer, he came back and he chose the 12 apostles. Judas was one of those doing those casting out the demons, holding the money. He was doing all that. Yeah, he was. But he was, he was appointed to perdition. Now, after that, we're about to find out that they're about to talk about Peter, uh, Castellans, and picking Matthias. Yeah. But... Was Matthias really the twelve apostles of the Lamb? God, here's or was the deal. Paul? Well, they came to God in prayer and said, "God, which of these two men?" Yeah. Well, We're about maybe to... they should have just come to God in prayer and said, "Who?" They didn't need to give. Well, to here them. it is in verse fourteen. These all continued with one accord in, in prayer, prayer and supplication with the women that Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. So they continued in prayer. That's kind of what we were just talking about. Mm -hmm. Where they were in the upper room praying. Amen. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples, and uh, the number about 120. 120. Then he says, Men and brethren, this scripture must have been fulfilled which the Holy Ghost spake by the mouth of David before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. Now, the thing that captures me here, and, and we're about to talk about the book of Acts, God right now is doing stuff with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. um, in the very first part of the Sermon on the Mount, it says, And Jesus opened his mouth and taught them. Uh, Jesus mm -hmm. tells his disciples, when they take you, when they're about to kill you, you're going to be killed by the people in the synagogues for my name. He says, when they deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what you'll say, for it's going to be the Spirit of God speaking through you. Now, I'm going to tell you, we have learned this when we're doing this ministry, when we go out, when you, like Hebrews 5.14, I think it's 5.14. Mm -hmm. We have our senses exercised by reason of use. And one of the things that happens is every once in a while, something comes out your mouth and you go, wow, what was that? Mm -hmm. And it's one of these things where he talks about the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David. God uses our mouths. That's right. 
right. No, yeah. I think that's it's amazing. And, well, you, and they did, did it with Peter. If you think about it, Peter was not even willing to speak that he even knew Jesus. So he not only that changed, of course, because he was full of boldness with the Holy Spirit, but he used him speaking to thousands. And just the opposite once the Holy Spirit was there. Shout out to Johnny Gaston hey, from Johnny. Reach. What's going on, man? Everybody yeah. follow Johnny Gasson. He's an on-fire evangelist in the Mobile area. He's mm -hmm. really making a difference. So check him mm -hmm. out, Johnny Gasson. Training mm -hmm. people up, going out on the streets, snow cone ministries. Teaching them how Amen. to spread the gospel. Making a difference in the community. Right. Um, <clears throat> and I guess if we, he says concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Judas, for he was numbered with us and had obtained... Part, part of, this, of ministry. this ministry. Now this purchased a field, this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity and falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst and all of his bowels gushed out. Basically, Jesus was so remorse with guilt that he killed himself. Yeah. And it's a prophetic, you know, this is a prophetic thing. This was This was going to happen. Uh, I don't know if it was going to happen by him killing himself, but that's uh, his betrayal was written beforehand. Yeah, it was in the Old Testament. Amen. It's almost eight o'clock. Yeah, let's keep going. Now. Let's, let's keep going. Let's, let's keep going a that little part. bit. Read one twenty. All right, one nineteen, and it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem, in so much as this field called in the proper tongue as Seldama which is to say, fill the blood, for it's written in the book of Psalms, let his habitation be desolate, and let no man dwell therein, and his bishopric another take. Mm -hmm. um, Therefore of these men which have accompanied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us. So they're going into, you know, they want someone to replace Judas. That's kind of what all this is about. They're getting ready to talk about casting the lots for Matthias. Right. And one of the reasons I wanted to pause, to, to pause it about the 12 apostles of the Lamb is, you know, Paul calls himself an apostle born out of due season. And I'm not he saying I'm, I'm saying that I'm right here. I'm just saying, you My know, this is, something, this is something that we should talk about because... Matthias really didn't do anything. We I mean, never we, we don't. We don't. I'm not saying he didn't do anything. Not busy what busy. I'm saying is, it, it, there's silent. It's just, there's not much in scripture about him. And I'm not saying he was a bad guy or nothing. Keep reading. Let's just get that okay. part. Let's read. Beginning part. the baptism of John until the same day that he was taken up from us, one must be ordained to be a witness with us of, of his, his resurrection. resurrection. And they appointed two, Joseph and Bar, called Barsabbas, whose surname Justice and Matthias. And they prayed and said, you want to talk about who these people are? Uh, yeah, let me, no, let me read and keep reading. And they prayed and said, Thou, Lord, which knowest the hearts of all men, show whether of these two thou hast chosen. So, you saying so that? what I'm saying is their prayer was, they had already, the men had already narrowed it down to those two. But did God... Do that. That's a good argument. I'm not saying. I mean, we don't. This know. we just positive. You that. know, it's something that also to consider. You know, and and now it was really only recently that I considered this. You know, just because a disciple or an apostle or a prophet or someone in the Bible says something or does something, it does not mean that it is something the Lord is telling us to do. Always. A it's a good example. Okay, and the reason I say this is because we also have their mistakes as our examples. Yeah. They made, they did great things, good things, godly things, and then they made mistakes as well. And we learn from both their mistakes and the things they did right. Jesus is the only teacher in the Bible who made no mistake. He's the only teacher in the Bible that not just said it right, but he did it right too. So when we look at Paul's ministry, his teachings that are in the Word of God are true and good. And I don't, I'm not dismissing anything he's preached or taught at all. What I am saying is some of the decisions he made personally 
and the disciples made themselves. They didn't always, we don't know for a fact that everything that they did was Holy Spirit inspired, unless it says that. So that's just something to pray about. When you're reading the Bible, consider not everything they did. Like this, we don't know because we don't really have anything else to go on but this, these verses. So we'll never know for sure that Matthias, that was God's doing, you know? Yeah, but yeah. We just don't know. Something to chew on, man. We're not making a doctor. And he doesn't really it. matter yeah. in the scheme of things because nothing Matthias did is in Scripture. So... Does it really matter or not? I don't know, but I do think Paul is the 12th apostle. I've always thought that. Hi, Penny Como. It's good to see you. Thanks for the thumbs up. Hey. And then, uh, you know, and then it says, by transgression fell. So that's something. That he might go his own place, and they gave forth their lots, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was numbered with the 11 apostles. So we're, yeah. we'll leave it at that. Um, we're going to keep it at 30 Stop minutes. Stop at the 26th. Because it's hot. It's warm, and we got to go. It's hot. It's nah. getting dark. Can you it's hear dark that? outside. We got to get a lamp. We gave away everything. Can you hear the stuff? Including all our lamps. So we don't have one now. Anyway, if you have questions or whatever. Also, I'm, I'm doing my podcast again. Oh, on my podcast starting tomorrow, I'm doing... Uh, Susan and I have learned a lot. Hi, Jenny Reese Clark. Hi, Jenny. Susan and I have learned a lot about actually going out and evangelizing and ministering in public. And I, what I did is I, I did about five... I'm on five podcasts in a row about just some of the personal stuff that I, that I learned. I don't call it prophetic evangelism, I call it presence evangelism. Presence because evangelism. what's happening is the presence of God shows up when we pray for people and it's like, wow, it's awesome. It changes so, I just, you know, like I can, you can read about fishing all you want, but until you like get on the boat or something, you, oh man, I need to bring a life jacket and I need this type of Did bug you? repellent for where I'm at. You know, you need to know all these little things. And I'm sharing a lot of those little things um, in, over like five podcasts and over the next five days. Did you mention the one about Philip? Oh, yes, you mentioned one. You know, what was really cool this weekend, this is an example of oh, the yeah. kind of thing the Lord does. Holy Spirit showing we, up. Were, we were driving past Singing River Hospital and a man was seated under a tree. And this is a place we pray for people multiple times. So Conrad looks over and goes, let's go. Let's go pray for this man sitting under the tree. So we pull in, and they go over there, him and Joseph, to pray for him. Yeah. And I was parking the car, so I wasn't there. Uh, and then when they walked up to the man, he instantly took off. Dude freaked out. He didn't want to do it. He didn't want to pray. And so they're walking off thinking, well, that didn't turn out so good. Oh, man, but, it's one of those rejections but, that are but monumental. But the minute this has happened, and this other guy was standing there, okay? This other man was... Uh, or it's another boy, I guess it's more yeah, like. a boy, yeah. They saw him, and they met him right at the time they came up the hill from that rejection, okay? Well, that prayer turned out to be super Holy Ghost, oh my goodness. Yeah. And the boy even said, Dude, I felt that. Yeah. You know, I felt the it's power of God come God. from you to, through me. And uh, they had a long prayer. He was visibly moved. Um, and yeah. it was, And then afterwards, we started realizing if that first man had said yes, it probably would have been begrudgingly, if you know what I'm saying. He wasn't excited about it. And they would have missed the opportunity to pray for that boy who desperately needed that prayer. Yeah. So see, God can even use a rejection. He can use everything to orchestrate events the way that he needs them to be. And uh, that's exactly what happened this past weekend. So Amen. it's awesome. And that's the sort of thing that happens all the time. And you don't really experience those things until you just step out. Amen. So I encourage you to do that. And the acts that we're studying is people stepping out. They're actually acting upon the Word of God. That's right. Well, let's pray our way out. All right. Heavenly Father, we thank you for what you're doing um, in Gaucher. And we thank you, Lord, for all the stuff that you're doing in America. Through the people that are watching this broadcast, Lord, I pray, mm -hmm. I pray for um, a closeness. Uh, I pray for night seasons conversations, Lord. I pray for the Holy Spirit to say, this is the way, walk in it. Lord, I thank you for those course corrections in our life. I thank you for the supernatural provision and protection that you provide these people, Lord. And I pray that they, they know that as they draw near to you, you will draw near to them. Amen. And you, if they're about the business of God, you'll be about their business in Jesus' name. Dear Lord, thank you for this chance to read your word and to really just marvel at 
all that you did uh, through your your life, your ministry, through the people that you chose, your disciples, and all these events that took place that we can read about them, you know, thousands of years later, and they still have an impact on us. Yeah. And Lord, we pray that we will be faithful once again to return to that great commission that you you gave us, that we would have a heart like yours, that we would love people and have a desire to see people saved and, and come to the knowledge of you, Lord. And I just pray that you will bless those that are listening uh, and just give them grace to hear what you're, you want your church to hear. Mm -hmm. And we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Be sure and check out the, the podcast this week. You're in the sidebar, if not on the blog, of ConradRocks.net. God bless you. Thank you for being in our lives. Until we meet again, dig deeper. Go, go higher. higher.